Last year I reviewed this 49 inch Bayam Last year I reviewed this 49 inch Behemoth behind me, the Samsung G9 Neo. But before I switched to an ultra wide, I did actually use two Apple Thunderbolt displays side by side. And so we come to 2022 when Apple launched the Studio Display, which features a 5K Retina HDR display, built in camera, speakers, 600 nits of HDR brightness, an A13 Bionic chip, and apparently 64 gig of storage. It is basically the combination of just the display parts of an iMac and an old generation like iPad or, or even an iPhone. But putting that aside, one thing in particular caught my eye here. So for the Samsung G9 and G9 Neo, their native resolution, horizontal resolution is 5120, which is exactly the same as the studio display's horizontal resolution. So this means that they are squeezing in the same width of a 49 inch display into a 27 inch screen. Now not also does the studio display have a higher resolution, they also have that built in camera, the microphone, spatial audio speaker system, which means I should actually be able to replace my dock, my audio interface, my microphone, my webcam and speakers all just with the Apple Studio display. Oh, and I also bought two of them to make it a much fairer comparison. So just to clarify, this is not a review for gamers. This is for productivity nerds like me who bought the G9 as a single wide display with no bezels in the center. It's 1000R radius curve, and at least on Mac, you can get 120 hertz from it. So Apple's two um, Samsungs, and as far as simple measurements go, from left to right, the Samsung G9 Neo is 115 centimeters wide, whereas two studio displays side by side with a slight angle on them are actually very, very close. It's 117 centimeters wide. So basically they are the same physical size, depending on how you angle them in. Onto the pixel peeping test now, where you can actually see the pixels. So on the G9, if you know what you're looking for, you can see where the pixels make up, say, the lettering on the screen, but you do have to look closely for it. and that's because on the G9 we've got 108 pixels per inch, but for Apple, you've got 5K at 218 pixels per inch for a total of 14.7 million pixels. That is literally double the G9, which kind of makes sense since it's half the size and, and yeah, that all checks out. Now this means that even if you look closely at the screen, it is very, very difficult to see where the pixels are on the studio display. Does it actually make a difference? Actually, yeah, like stuff definitely looks noticeably sharper on the studio display and I definitely prefer the higher PPI. Next is one area that actually surprised me is the display technology. Now the G9 Neo uses mini LED technology with 2048 dimming zones. The studio display actually has an older generation LED backlit, which doesn't actually have any local dimming. Now this means when watching things in darker rooms, you will perhaps notice issues with blooming on the studio displays where you just wouldn't have that on the G9 Neo. Which actually brings me on to the overall brightness because the G9 Neo does have a peak HDR brightness of up to 2000 nits, which is like a self-certified HDR standard from there as well compared to just 600 nits on the studio display. Now this would seem to be like a massive difference, but in reality, the high quality and better colors from the Apple studio display overall does make for a better kind of argument to go for if you're looking mainly for like work involved in graphics or video editing work. Now, of course, if you are gaming, then just get the G9. It's obviously the better choice there. So I'll show you some sample footage here from Jonathan Morrison, which was all shot in HDR just to show you the difference between the two screens. And let me know what you think down below in the comments, which one looks better. Over to the audio now and with the G9 Neo I have the Harman Kardon 2.1 like the OG sound sticks wired in but I've been seriously impressed with the sound that's come out from the MacBook Pros over the years so I wanted to actually see if these studio displays could be a match for the sound sticks. <laughs> So whilst the sound is very impressive for audio built into the screen, it is no comparison for a proper system still with the subwoofer on the floor. Now, of course, you don't feel those particularly bunchy bass notes or the kick drum that you do with a proper sub, but when comparing it, it does just feel like the whole bottom end of the track is just missing on the studio displays. Now, I thought that perhaps the saving grace here could be spatial audio, but that just mimics a surround sound kind of thing by throwing the audio out of the left, the right, the far left and the far right side of the speaker system and definitely isn't any comparison when using like proper air pods in your ears. Over to the microphone now, and this is what it sounds like coming straight out of the Apple Studio display. And I'm also gonna compare it to the mic that's built into the Logitech C920 webcam. So what does this sound like? But when you put it up against the sound quality of a proper audio interface along the proper studio quality microphone, well, what do you think? I mean, I haven't heard what this sounds like back yet, but I can only assume it's gonna sound significantly better with this like 400 pound setup. It's 300 pounds for the mic, 100 pounds for the audio interface. So what do you think?
Now the question is whether it's worth spending the extra. So what do you think? Let me know down in the comments. Would you pay an extra £400 for the difference in audio quality? But that is only one piece of the puzzle, of course. What about the video quality on the Apple Studio displays with their A13 chips and their 64 gig of storage built into the screen for some reason? And I've always struggled with the video quality, even on the Logitech C920 webcam, which is pretty much like the industry standard when it comes to webcams. It must be like the lighting or something. This just looks horrendous. It doesn't matter if I've got the, the blinds closed, lights on, off, whatever it is, it just doesn't look that great. So when comparing this to the built-in camera into the studio display, this, I mean, this looks so much better than the Logitech. Yes, it definitely does. But one thing I can definitely see that's going on here is that my skin has never looked so smooth. There's there's some very, very heavy image processing. Processing? Processing uh, going on here. I'm not sure I quite like it, but the image as a whole is definitely a better quality. Still a bit grainy, it's, you know, it's not, it's not great. Um, but um, in terms of getting the image quality improved over the Logitech, definitely an improvement. So um, yeah, I would give the award, if there was one, to the studio display between the Logitech and the studio display. So does the studio display replace my audio interface, microphone, speakers, and webcam? Probably not. Unless you really, really want to sacrifice quality for just simplicity of having it all built into one device. So I would definitely keep my audio interface, my mic and my speakers, but use the camera if I could do from the studio display. But it doesn't end there because there are still a few other things to consider. And the first one is price. Now the price for the Apple display is around 1500 bucks, 1500 pounds, which is already quite an expensive monitor. Actually, if you spec this thing up, you can get this with a tilt stand, special anti-reflective coating and a warranty that runs this to over 2000 whereas the list price for the g9 is two and a half thousand but you can actually find it for about 2000 us or 1800 uk pounds so if you want to replicate the actual like desktop space of the g9 you will have to spend almost double that with two studio displays and that's not the only big difference here the apple studio displays have an energy rating efficiency of e now i hooked this up with my own power meter and whilst using the displays at max brightness with the camera on and and music up loud, it constantly draws almost 65 watts. Reduce the max brightness by about three notches, switch off the camera, turn the music down. That brings it down to just over 40 watts. Now compare this to the Samsung G9 Neo display, which is an even worse class G rating, and with brightness set to maximum, draws a huge 104 watts. But as far as the screen goes, that does draw less than having two of these studio displays if you want to like double up for the screen real estate like I have. So one G9 Neo will technically be cheaper to run than these two studio displays from a power point of view. But that said, if you do add on these separate speakers, then you're about again on par in terms of power consumption. Where there are big differences, however, is the usability. And this is just so frustrating for me because there are such, such good things about both of these screens that it's just purely personal preference now on which one is best for you. Firstly, for me, the screen bezels. I do not like having bezels down the middle again. It's something I've gotten so used to with a G9 and that's actually using the center of that screen. You always get like a third monitor by having that center area back. But now we're back to having a massive black line in between my screens. And that also means that when you're sat down, you're either looking left at the left screen or right at the right screen. Now with the ultra wide, typically you actually look directly forward into the middle. Now if, of course, it's not the end of the world, but it's still not as nice of experience as having a single larger display, in my opinion. What is good is when you want to make something full screen because now it only takes up one part of your screen and you can enjoy one monitor being full screen whilst the other is still usable and yes you can kind of do that by either like multiple cables or just stretching windows on the g9 but it's not quite the same as that true full screen mode want to share your desktop for a video call well now you can share one screen which is more of a like globally accepted resolution instead of expecting the other caller to have your like 49 inch display squeezed onto their smaller regular size screen if you want to screen record something for for youtube say well now you can do this easily instead of having to manually draw the recording frame on the 49 inch screen like I literally have to do every time I shoot something for this channel. Also another added bonus of these Apple's kind of displays is that you can use your controls on your keyboard to change the brightness which on the Mac Studio is just a simple case of moving your mouse to whichever screen and then you can just change the brightness with the controls on your keyboard. That kind of really really helps and it's a lot less fiddier than having to use like the on-screen controls on the G9. Now, one thing I'd love to see on the studio displays, and given that I'm using two screens together, which is probably quite a common thing to, to use these for, I would love to be able to use both speakers at once. It would be really cool if they could combine all of the speakers on both screens, provide like a wider split for the, le not the left and right channels, which would be more similar to that of using like the proper desktop speakers where I position them further apart. So, um, so yeah, what do you think? Would you have two higher quality studio displays 
or one lower, slightly lower resolution, 49 inch ultra wide. It's a tough one, but I think honestly for me, I'm gonna keep the 49 inch ultra wide screen. I just don't like having bezels down the middle, even though you technically get more space on the studio display. Speakers, not better than my 20, two year old 22 years old speaker system wow the webcam it's better than the logitech i'll give it that but it's still not a huge upgrade now perhaps instead of buying one or maybe two of these you might consider the new mac studio or maybe the m1 mac mini so click here for that i'll see you in the next one cheers bye bye